What is going on, everyone? Sergeant Argerberg here, and today we're going to be reacting to Tick for the first time. Why not? Um, one of you suggested that I react to him, so sure, let's do that. But if I'm going to react to like a really long, like 50 minute video, first I'm going to see how y'all respond to like a regular Tick video. So I'm going to, because I don't want to like spend my time doing four episodes on, like, a YouTube channel y'all don't care about. So, for today, we're, we're just reacting to a ten-minute video just to see if y'all like his channel or not. I certainly do. Tick is definitely one of the, like, yeah, probably, arguably, the best history channel on YouTube. Um, that I know of, at least. And you guys in the comments seem to enjoy him as well, at least from what I've seen. And, yeah, um... So as you can see from the um, like to dislike ratio, should be an interesting one, but without further ado, let us get started. Perception of the World War II Eastern Front is wrong. Let's see what he has to say. There's this view prevailing in the Western public eye that the German army wasn't really beaten by the Red Army on the battlefield, at least not on the tactical or operational level. That's kind of dumb. Another belief relating to this point is that the Germans were simply unable to recruit enough soldiers or Yeah, because, like, um, Germany actually had plenty of manpower. It wasn't until 1944 that they started to run out. And by then the war was already lost, so yeah. And by then the Allies were coming in in France, and the Allies were coming in Italy. And at that point they were, they were already done, so manpower is definitely not the factor make enough equipment to maintain their army in the field. Yeah, they had a good amount of... They had plenty of equipment. They just didn't have the oil, enough oil to run the equipment. That was the problem. In this view, German forces on the Eastern Front became weaker as the war went on until eventually there was nothing left to stop the endless Red Army hordes overwhelming the gallant German soldiers. As one German officer explained, the German divisions were like rocks in and also, there's one new video he has. I just want to say this before I continue. There's one new video he has called Why like, Hitler Didn't Trust His Generals. And I'm really excited to react to that one. I've never reacted to it before. It's brand new. This one's from like three years ago. So let me know if you want me to react to that in the comments. It looks really interesting, and I'm excited to watch it. It's in the ocean, drowning under endless waves of Soviet rifles and tanks. The German army is seen as technically superior in both leadership and skill on the tactical and operational level. But is this view correct? And where did this idea originally come from? Let's tell the story. Tick their story. The early accounts of the Eastern Front published in the late 1950s, established the general beliefs we have today. These rely heavily on German officer accounts. And of course, German officers like to point out how professional they were and how professional their armies were. Yeah, the, these officers aren't going to say how bad they were or how bad their armies that they created were because that's not what people do. That's true, especially considering that um, you know, obviously, the Germans had, a, like, a ton of pride, like, in their nation and in their race, since they saw themselves as superior. So, I guess that makes sense. Well, actually, no, that was kind of dumb. That's not really what he, that's not really the point he was saying. So, just ignore what I said there. But, yeah, I, I definitely get the point he's getting. Like, they're not going to want to admit to their mistakes like that, and they'd rather pin it on someone else. Instead, they found all their excuses for their defeat. In these accounts, Hitler's incompetence and the Red Army's sheer weight of numbers, the only thing they actually had going for them, was what eventually led to Germany's defeat. These officers went out of their way to criticize Hitler's leadership and separate Wehrmacht from state. They said that the Wehrmacht and the Heer were not the same as the SS and the Nazi. The hair just means the army, I think, in German. I could be wrong. Pretty sure it just means army. Hitler's leadership 
and separate Wehrmacht from state. They said that the Wehrmacht and the hair were not the same as the SS and the Nazi party as a whole, and Hitler, the madman, is the reason everything went wrong for Germany. And with Hitler being dead, he couldn't really argue against them. German division and regimental yeah. histories were also common after the end of the war. Try and find Soviet unit histories in English, and you'll even struggle now. All this contributes to the German dominance in historiography and emphasised the German defeat in terms of numerical weakness. And German accounts were popular with Anglo-American audiences for a few good reasons. Oh yeah. First, because that it was the reasons. prestigious German officers who wrote them, and because the USA wanted to learn from German experiences fighting the Soviets so it would be in a better position to fight the Soviets if the Cold War turned hot. Oh yeah, that is definitely a good point. Halder and other German officers gave their manuscripts in where they remained firm in their conviction that the Wehrmacht was great and that the Red Army relied solely on numbers alone. The US... Well, look at that. He's a bit of a Hitler mustache, as you can see. This army is won over by the German view, so much so that the United States reward Halder with a meritorious Civilian Service Award in 1961. What? So the United States gave Halder, who didn't oppose the Commissar Order and who arguably knew about the fate of the Jews and other war crimes, they gave him one of the highest civilian awards the United States could actually offer. And because the US Army thought the German view was right, the public assumed that the German view must have been accurate and unbiased when the reports were published in the 1960s. Meanwhile, Soviet sources were simply not available during the Cold War. And those that well, were yeah, for sound obvious reasons. like propaganda pieces rather than sounding factually correct. Or in Zukov's case, it was that heavy, it could only be delivered to your local bookstore on the back of a KD-210. Oh my gosh. It heavy, it could only be delivered to your local bookstore. Marshall or Victory. The auto by oh my god. On the back of a KD-210. Soviet sources were also biased, focusing on the big Soviet victories like Moscow, Stalingrad, Kursk, and Berlin. In these accounts, Red Army defeats were scarcely mentioned, if at all. Suspicious and distrust of communists, especially during the Cold War, gave Western scholars and the public as a whole the perception that the Soviet sources were dubious at best. And they do sound like propaganda pieces. Plus, why bother with Soviet accounts when there are plenty of German officers publishing their own accounts in a language not too dissimilar to your own? However, starting during the Cold War, but especially more so recently, scholars have questioned the German view of the war. Think about it. If you were to write a biography for you, for, you know, everyone to read, you're not going to admit your own mistakes or your deepest, darkest secrets. German officers certainly didn't admit theirs. New German archival material has been found in addition to Soviet sources now more accessible after the end of the Cold War and more detailed studies of the German side have brought into question the old memoirs of the German officers and challenged our perception of the Eastern Front. Mm. It's now clear that many of the claims and beliefs of the early German officers are either inaccurate or fabricated. Well, yeah, that would, that would make a lot of sense from a, you know, like, a nation built off of propaganda. The German army didn't lose the war. The Red Army won it. And that is the fundamental shift that needs to take place. The Red Army beat the German army operationally and tactically on the field of battle. We constantly hear how great and efficient the German Wehrmacht was and how they fought against great odds. But the people saying that were the German generals themselves, and of course, yeah, they would say that, wouldn't they? The reality was, though, that the efficient German army lost the war. So, realistically, it couldn't have been that good if it lost it. The idea that the Germans weren't able to field enough men or equipment has also been exaggerated. German divisions on the Eastern Front were actually stronger than the traditional argument of the, the war would have you believe. They're not at full strength after Barbarossa, mm. but neither are the Soviets. 
and they're able to reinforce their armies and keep them well equipped right up until Kursk. The reality was really? that the wow. Germans weren't vast. That is surprising, considering the fact that like the Soviets did that giant, like Operation Uranus attack. They outnumbered until after Kursk. At that point, they'd already lost the war. Instead, German intelligence was poor, and that meant that the Soviets could concentrate several armies at certain points in the front. So, yes, the German divisions facing several Soviet armies were vastly outnumbered. That's only because German intelligence had failed to spot the build-up of Soviet forces. A good example of this is during Operation Uranus, where the Germans knew an offensive... Haha, <laughs> he said Uranus. That's hilarious. ...was coming, but didn't know exactly where it was coming or realize the scale of the operation being mounted against them. Again, the reality was, uh, on a whole, the German army wasn't vastly outnumbered, and they weren't so badly equipped. Well, like, if if you put it on, like, a, um... Like, the, the, the German army was vastly outnumbered. But I think he just, mean, just means that, like, it's a, they were less outnumbered than, like, the German generals would have you to believe. Because, like, if you, look, if you look up the numbers online, yeah, the Germans are definitely outnumbered a lot. Yeah, these are the given reasons as to why the Germans lost the war. It's now obvious that the answer lies elsewhere. And that answer is the Germans were beaten by the Soviets on the battlefield through tactical, operational... Yeah, in another video he, like, he talks about oil. Which he says is like the most, that was the um, factor that made Germany lose. So, yeah, he has a whole video on that. It's like 46 minutes long, but yeah. That is a great video. I've watched it before. And strategic victories, with logistical issues being a factor within that. Yet, the perception that the German Wehrmacht was so efficient, unbeatable, and also on the strength somehow, is so ingrained in Western culture that any attempt at revision of this concept is going to be difficult. Despite less biased texts by authors like Worth, Erickson, Clark, Centino, and probably the most prominent, David Glantz, the myth of German Wehrmacht superiority remains the same. But why? Put simply, old habits die hard, and the new view of the Eastern Front has not found its place in Western culture. Popular histories con I wonder how, like, Russia sees the war now. Like, in contrast to how us in, like, America or Europe, I say us, but, like, I guess me in America, just Americans or people in the Western world view, um, the war. Like, I don't know, it'd be interesting to see the difference between them. ...continue to champion the German-centric view because the Wehrmacht remains popular with the public. Publishers like profit, and so continue to feed you with sugar-coated hamburgers rather than give you something that's a bit more... Yeah, that just puts to a weird image in my mind. ...more balance for you to eat. Academic studies do not sell well, so chances are you haven't even heard of Glantz or have any of his books on your bookshelves. Yet, the fact remains that the German-only view is out of date, and the truth, while it is out there, is not widely known. And, unfortunately, people don't like change. Changing one's mindset requires a certain amount of effort. It's not natural to question something you believe in, especially if you've had those beliefs for a very long time. You may not have seen all the evidence, so how can you possibly believe this new evidence or this new viewpoint? All the evidence you have seen points you in one direction, and now you're being told that this new, wonderful evidence it's got to be wrong, right? But how can you be sure that this evidence is wrong if you haven't seen the evidence? So let's start in the right place. This book, Enduring the Whirlwind, is the main Heard of that one source before, of information actually. for this video. In fact, I've just spelt out its introduction to you. Uh, and while I do recommend Glantz's works and many others, and go and read them, this book does oh, a good job of dispelling the myths of the German army between 1941 and 1943. Thank you to Jeff for recommending me this, and thank you, thank you Jeff, to my patrons as you enabled me to purchase this book. 
it's going to make a vital contribution to my Stalin Grab documentary. Now, David. Yeah, he also has like a giant documentary about um, Stalin Grab and all of that. Glance's lecture on the myths and realities of the Eastern. In fact, he just posted one, like, I think his second latest video is about. Um, is it about a Stalin Grab series? So that's pretty cool. This one is fantastic. And I'm going to link it in the description below and on the screen. I'm going to highly well, encourage is. you to go and give it a watch. It just goes into a lot of detail. It's amazing. I'm even Dang, it's like an hour and 20 minutes. Issue, in your opinion, is the general Western viewpoint changing or are we stuck in our old ways? Do you dismiss the revisionist historians as, you know, and the histories as myth or are you glad that the truth is finally being revealed? If you can let me know in the comments below, that would be fantastic. Let's get into a debate. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye for now. Well, thank you all for watching, everyone. That was a good video. Let me know what you think of this um, channel. Um, yeah. But make sure to put your suggestions in the comments below. Thank you once again for watching, and goodbye. Hello everyone, if you enjoyed this video, make sure to like it and subscribe to my channel. And you know, turn on the notification bell thingy. And if you didn't, then make sure to leave a uh, thumbs down. But yeah, that would be greatly appreciated. And while you're at it, go ahead and watch my other videos. They're probably just as good, and if not better, than this one right now. Except for my oldest videos, don't watch those. And, you know, subscribe to these people down here, my fellow sergeants. They're other YouTubers that I either know or I have in high regards. Yeah, even my cat agrees. So, thank you for watching, and have a great day.